already. Check one, two, check one, two. Check one, two, check one, two. What's up, Brian? Can you hear me? Check, 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 check. Can you hear me at all there, Brian? Can you hear me there? Anything at all? Okay. How about now? Can you hear me now? I turned it up a little bit. Can you hear me? Okay. I'm gonna Davis is away right now. Um but I'm going to I'm going to check his mic right now too for you. Oh no, you're fine. Alrighty, this is Davis's mic. Can you hear me at all with Davis? Okay, sweet. All right, my man. So we should be all good then. Um, we're going to go on probably in about 20 minutes. So around like, let's shoot for like 6.55. So if you want to play like two PSAs right before that or three, whatever, whatever you want to do, just make sure you give us a countdown and everything, and then we'll have ourselves a day. Alright, yeah, that's perfect. Sounds good, my man. Yeah, so, um, we'll stay on the call. Yeah, you want to start those two at 6.54. Just make sure you let us know whenever we're on the air, and then, yeah, it's going to be awesome. Hopefully we get a win.
All right, thank you, man. I appreciate you.
to you live from the McPherson Academic and Athletic Complex here on the beautiful campus of the University of Mountain Union. You are tuned in to Purple Raider Basketball here on the men's basketball live stream as well as 91.1 WRMU. As ladies and gentlemen, it is OAC tournament time here. It is that time of the season as your eighth ranked Mountain Union Purple Raiders play host to their rivals, the John Carroll Blue Streaks here in tonight's OAC quarterfinal matchup. My name is Jacob Vitar. Alongside me, we have the great Davis, Roby, and Davis. This will be the third time now that these two teams meet this year. Mountain Union came away victorious at John Carroll, 93-83. We most recently saw the Blue Streaks up here about a month ago where Mountain Union was able to pull away with an 89-80 victory. And JCU, they came in as the 10 seed. They pulled off the upset last night over the 7 seeded Wilmington Quakers. Davis, take us through some guys to look out for and what happened last night with the John Carroll Blue Streaks. Yeah, we're looking at... If we're looking at players, specifically Jacob, uh, Jackson Sartan leads the, excuse me, leaves the Blue Streaks in scoring with just over 17 and a half per game, which is good for fourth in the OAC, and also leads the rebound or leads the team in rebounds as well with just under five and a half a game. But in their last game out against Wilmington, like you said, Jacob, last night, PJ Flannery led the way with 19 points as David Gentry finished with 14 points and seven rebounds. Connor O'Toole had 11 points in the JCU bench, outscored Wilmington 36 to 12 and shot 48% from the field and 39% behind the three point line. So a big emphasis for the Purple Raiders is obviously putting up the defense good enough to stop that good scoring that John Carroll had last night. And also one of the harder things to do in sports is beat a team three times. And we'll see if Mount Union can do it here tonight against the Blue Streaks. Yeah, I love that last point that you just made right there, partner, because last year it was actually in the OAC quarterfinals, Purple Raiders, they were playing Muskingum for the third time this, that season. Muskingum was able to pull off the upset here at the max, so the Raiders are going to try to avoid an upset here tonight. John Carroll, though, they were down in Wilmington last night, so that's about a four-and-a-half-hour bus ride for them. A lot of traveling back and forth for the Blue Streaks in a two-day spin. We'll see if that affects them at all here, the early goings of this one. But taking a look at your Raiders, they are coming in as the two-seed in this OAC tournament with a 21-3 and record overall and 14-3 and in the OAC. Davis, who are you looking out for here tonight to make an impact for the Raiders? Uh, a big impact for the Raiders in tonight's game, I think, is going to be Christian Parker. He's second in the OAC in scoring with just over 19 points per game and is also second in the OAC with rebounds per game with just under 8.5. But the Raiders overall have a lot of good players, such as Ethan Stanislawski, Braden Poole, and Chris Painter Jr. But in the game against Otterbein, Christian Parker hit the game-winning shot with one second left in the game. But he also led the way with 23 points, 8 rebounds, as Darrell Newsom added 12 points in 4 blocks, with Braden Poole adding 11 points, 14 rebounds, and 3 blocks. But overall, the team had 11 blocked shots. But the team only shot 13% from behind the three-point line, and, but held Autobahn to 36% from the floor. So definitely need to be better behind the arc, especially if they're going to shoot the ball as much as they do. But overall, great game for the Raiders last time out. Yeah, that's for sure. The Raiders pulled off a 63-61 victory in their regular season finale. We'll see if they can keep up their winning ways here tonight in the OAC quarterfinals as they could have a date set at the OAC semifinals. If they win, they'd be hosting it here at the MAC 2 So it's going to be important here for the Raiders. They must win out to try to have a shot at that OAC title. We're going to take a short pause here for the National Anthem, but we'll be back on momentarily here to get you ready with starting lineups for tonight's quarterfinal matchup between the Raiders and the Blue Streaks.
back here on 91.1 WRMU and the men's basketball live stream, getting you ready for tonight's OAC quarterfinal matchup between your Purple Raiders and the visiting John Carroll Blue Streaks. Let's take a look at some starting lineups here tonight. First for the visiting Blue Streaks, they are led by fifth-year head coach Pete Moran. This starting lineup consists of the junior guard from Olmstead Falls, Ohio, number one, Eric Hanna. The sophomore guard from Avon, Ohio, number two, Connor O'Toole. The junior guard from Hudson, Ohio, number three, William Wallace. The fifth-year senior from Medina, Ohio, number 15, Jackson Sartan, the leader of this John Carroll squad. And lastly, the freshman gets to start here tonight from Hudson, Ohio, power forward number 33, David Gentry. So that rounds out starting five for the Blue Streaks. And now taking a look at the starting five for your Purple Raiders. They, as always, led by 11th year head coach Mike Feline. Their starting lineup consists of the junior guard from Akron St. Vincent St. Mary High School, number three, Chris Painter Jr. The senior forward from Twinsburg, Ohio, number 13, Darrell Newsom. The senior guard from Maslin Jackson High School in nearby Maslin, Ohio, number 24, Ethan Stanislavski. The senior forward from McDonald, Ohio, number 30, Braden Poole. And rounding out that starting five here tonight for your Purple Raiders is the senior forward from Maslin Jackson High School, number 41, Logan Hill. Got a great crowd on hand here tonight for this OAC quarterfinal matchup as it's do or die from here on out for the Purple Raiders if they want a shot at that OAC title. And of course, the NCAA tournament is approaching faster than we know it. It'll actually start next week as well, next Friday and Saturday. And we'll keep you updated as well on the women's basketball team. They have their OAC quarterfinal matchup down in Marietta tonight. They're looking to pull off the upset on the Pioneers. And currently right now, with 7.37 left to go in the third quarter in that one, the Purple Raiders are on top, 47-33 over the Marietta Pioneers. Marietta came in as the third seed in the women's basketball tournament, and Mount Union came in as the sixth, so that could be an upset brewing right there. But Davis, given that this tournament basketball now, how important is it going to be for the Purple Raiders to come out with some sense of urgency and really try to get this game kind of out of hand early on, just get off to that good start? Yeah, it's very important, Jacob. And as a team, especially in tournament play, you want to build a solid foundation for how you start games and how you finish them as well. I know you can kind of get lost in between in that middle section as the jump ball goes up and John Carroll wins it. But being able to start strong makes a very strong impact on how the game uh, will continue. Yeah, that's for sure as off the opening tip here, David Gentry goes into the post. That one's well defended by Hill. However, JCU gets the extra shot here. Sartan fires up a three. No good. Stanislavski with the rebound. Stanislavski will get the Raiders set for their first offensive possession here tonight. As he kicks it over to Chris Painter Jr. Painter now dribbles it out back to Stanislavski. Stanislavski will hand it off now to Newsom. Newsom over to Poole as they go around the perimeter back to Painter. There's 12 on the shot clock here as Braden Poole puts it on the floor. Looks to go to work on O'Toole. He's met though on the baseline. Braden Poole stepped out of bounds. That'll be ball back to JCU. Yeah, Braden Poole definitely noticed the shot clock right there. Tried to create his own shot. Just had a misstep out of bounds, of course, which led to that turnover for the Purple Raiders. So William Wallace brings it up here. He will give that up to Connor O'Toole on the perimeter. David Gentry now will swing that over to William Wallace. Wallace guarded closely here by Painter. Sartan now swings it back over to O'Toole. 12 on the shot clock. O'Toole picks up his dribble, swings it over to Eric Hanna. Hanna pump fakes, drives, puts up the floater. In and out, no good. Gentry tried to come up with the rebound, but Hill grabs it out of his hands. Yeah, and great move right there from Eric Hanna being able to drive into the lane and get a shot up for the Blue Streaks. At the other end, Stanislavski fires up a quick three, and that'll get things started here tonight for the Raiders. Stanislavski from downtown. Yeah, and great statement right there from Stanislavski. Does a nice little dribble move at the top of the key beyond the three-point line and drains it. 3-0 Raiders here a minute and a half into this one as Sartan now on the perimeter, guarded closely by Newsom. He swings it over to O'Toole. O'Toole drives. Tried to kick it out to William Ross, but he's fouled in the process right there. We'll see who they get on the foul. And they're going to get Ethan Stanislavski there. That'll be Stanislavski's first personal, first team foul of the half. Yeah, a definite reach in right there from Stanislavski. Trying to disrupt that pass from Connor O'Toole. Got too much of, a, of his arm there. Wallace will inbound it to O'Toole. O'Toole now over to Gentry. Gentry will give it back to Wallace as the Blue Streaks have about 14 seconds on the shot clock to work with. O'Toole fires up a casual three. That's no good. Tipped into the hands of Darrell Newsom. 
Stanislavski brings it up now for Mountain Union as he gives it up to Painter. Painter now takes a screen from Logan Hill, steps back, fires up a mid-range. That one's good. It's 5-0 Raiders. Yeah, great bucket right there from Chris Painter Jr. Like you said, Jacob does a nice little step back dribble move, fades away and sinks it in for the Raiders. Now it's Eric Hanna. He gives it up to David Gentry, who will swing that over to Wallace. Wallace now down low to O'Toole. O'Toole gives it up to Sartan, who is cutting towards the basket. Nice move there by Sartan as he gets JCU's first two points tonight. Yeah, great design play right there. O'Toole gets the ball underneath, dishes it off to Sartain, who is cutting to the basket and puts it in for the Blue Streaks. Wonderful draw up right there. 5-2 Raiders here, 17-25 to go in the half. Stanislavski now being guarded closely here by Wallace. Gives it up to Newsom. Newsom fires up a quick three. That one's no good. Too strong. Rebound, Eric Hanna. So now it's O'Toole bringing it up here. He gives it right back to Hanna. Hanna pump fakes a three and will swing it over to Wallace. Down now on the baseline to Gentry. Gentry looks to go to work here on Hill. He will dump it right back over to William Wallace. Wallace now goes up for the layup. Great contest by Chris Painter and a late whistle here. They're going to get Painter on the shooting foul. That was a very late whistle. But William Wallace heads to the free throw line now for two. Yeah, and I agree with that, Jacob. Pretty late on that foul call, like you said. Honestly, thought it might have been a travel, but regardless, uh, William Wallace up at the line for two for the boost. Oh, never mind. They were actually inbounding the ball. Uh, very interesting. They called that on Painter. It looked like it was on the shot, but nonetheless, it'll be just an inbounds here for JCU. As now, off the inbounds pass of... Originally, I thought they were calling a five-second violation, but nonetheless, they're going to say Connor O'Toole caught that pass on the baseline. It was out of bounds back to Mount Union. Stanislavski's going to bring it up now for the Raiders. They lead 5-2, to 16-48 to go in the half here on 91.1 WRMU as Painter takes a screen and fires up a step-back three that's no good. Rebound into the hands of O'Toole. Wallace brings it up now for JCU. He swings it cross court over to Hannah, whose three is well short. Rebound to Newsom. Newsom now gives up to Stanislavski, who brings things up for the Raiders. Steps back, gives it up to Hill. Hill right back to Stanislavski. Zethan looks to go to work. Stanislavski now fires up a mid-range shot. They're going to call a foul here. And I believe it's going to be on William Wallace. So that'll be first team foul of the half for JCU, first on Wallace. Yeah, and I thought they were actually going to get Logan Hill right there for a moving screen, but I'm pretty sure William Wallace was just a little too aggressive right there with Logan Hill, which is the result of that call. Omer Abumande, Mason Trubisky, and P.J. Flannery all check in here for JCU as off the inbound, Stanislavski fires up a three. That one's no good. Rebound Sartan. O'Toole now brings it up. He will kick that over to Flannery. Flannery fires up a three off the bench. It's no good. Rebound, though, to Trubisky. Second chance here for JCU. Trubisky now kicks it out to O'Toole. O'Toole fires up a three that's short. Once more, another possession here for JCU as Flannery gets the rebound. So now it's Connor O'Toole. He's guarded here by Stanislavski. He'll give that up to Abumande. Abumande now puts it on the floor, kicks it out to Flannery. Back to Abumande. Abumande now with five on the shot clock. Over to O'Toole, down low inside, now to Flannery, two on the shot clock. Great D by Hill, forces the miss. Yeah, great defense right there from the Raiders. Need to do a better job of getting that, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, getting that rebound though. As Stanislavski kicks it out to Darrell Newsom in the corner, 4-3, and Darrell Newsom hits it from downtown. Yeah, Stanislavski cutting in to the basket, dishes it out to the wing to Darrell Newsom, and in for that three-pointer for the Purple Raiders. It's 8-2 Mountain Union now. Sartan has it on the perimeter. He kicks over to Flannery. He'll kick it over to O'Toole. O'Toole now looking to go to work. Cross court over to Armande. Armande fires up a three. That's well off, no good. Rebound Newsom. Newsom gives it up to Stanislavski as Ethan brings things up now for the Raiders. Stanislavski now drives, goes up strong for the layup. That one's in and out, no good. Rebound though to Braden Poole and his putback effort's good. Raiders on top, 10-2. to two. Yeah, Stanislavski did a lot of work right there. Nice dribble moves, wait to use his footwork to get into that paint. And Braden Poole cleaned it up for him. As Sartan got Darrell Newsom off his feet and Newsom's actually going to get called for the foul here on Sartan as we're going to get a timeout here as well. Christian Parker, Andrew Keller, and Mike Scarios will check in for the Raiders out of the timeout, but Mountain Union, they're on top right now on this one, 10-2, and Davis 
so far the Raiders have held JCU to 1 for 11 shooting from the floor. What do you like from the Raiders' defense so far? Yeah, the defense has been tight and composed so far at the beginning of this game. Need to do a better job of rebounding as they did on that last possession, offensive possession for John Carroll. Leave up probably two or three offensive rebounds on that sequence. Other than that, they've been doing a great job of staying in front of their defender and not letting them score. Yeah, that's for sure, as the Raiders themselves shooting four for eight from the floor, that's good for 50%. They've also made two threes already, but JCU, one for 11 from the floor, like how I mentioned, that's good for 9%. They're also 0 for six from the three-point line so far. Gotta wonder if the travel in the past two days is affecting them right now, as Mountain Union has opened this game on a 10 to two run, five and a half minutes into this one. So out of the timeout here for JCU, it'll be the same five. It'll be Trubisky, Abumande, Sartan, and Connor O'Toole to go with P.J. Flannery. And for your Raiders, it'll be Andrew Keller, Ethan Stanislavski, Christian Parker, Braden Poole, and Mike Scariotis. So now Trubisky has it here. He will hand it off to Abumande. Abumande now is guarded by Keller. As he has it on the perimeter, he gives it up to Sartan. Sartan now over to O'Toole. O'Toole right back to Sartan. Sartan fires up a quick three. That's no good. Fight for the rebound. Poole comes up with it. So Andrew Keller off that Mount Union bench will bring it up now for the Raiders. As Keller gets the screen here from Christian Parker. Keller now on the perimeter is hounded by Monday. They're going to get Monday with the foul here. So that's going to be his first personal team second of the half. Yeah, it looks like they just called a reach-in foul right there on Omar. And... Looked like he was just trying to poke that ball away from Andrew Keller. Instead, got his arm. So Stanislavski inbounds it here to Braden Poole. Poole now will give it up to Keller. Keller has it at the Mount Union logo. Gives it up now to Poole. Poole tried to get it right back to Keller. Instead, puts it on the floor. It goes up strong for the layup. And Braden Poole with four points now. The Raiders on top by 10. Yeah, Braden Poole did a nice job of faking that pass off to Andrew Keller and just taking it himself into the lane. As around the perimeter, JCU goes. Abumande now. Drives on Keller. Nice fake move. Got Keller off his feet, and Abuhamde gets the shot to go. Yeah, and like you said, Jacob, beautiful fake move right there by Abuhamde, and able to put it in for the Blue Streaks. So it's now 12-4 Raiders here as Andrew Keller brings things up now for Mountain Union. Keller will hand it off on the perimeter. Mike Scariotis. Scariotis now drives. Gives it up to Brayden Poole. Poole looking to go to work on Trubisky. Goes up once more for the layup. Brayden Poole now six points. It's 14-4. Yeah, and Brayden Poole used the right hand the last time and uses the left hand this time. Beautiful lay-in right there from the senior. Connor O'Toole now gives it up on the perimeter to Flannery, who will give it up to Sartan. Sartan now guarded closely here by Poole. Gives it up back to O'Toole. O'Toole fakes. Goes up for the layup. That one's good. Great contest by Parker. Just better off than by O'Toole. Yeah, O'Toole looked like he just wanted to get the ball in the basket a little bit more right there. Like you said, Jacob, great contest right there from Christian Parker. Both hands up. But better finish from O'Toole. So Braden Poole now kicks it over to Stanislavski. Stanislavski fires up a quick three. That's no good. Into the hands of Abumande. Abumande now brings things up. 12.39 to go in the half. Raiders on top, 14-6 to here on 91.1 WRMU. As O'Toole gives it up to Flannery. Nice give and go action there as Flannery gets to the rim for two. Yep, this is it. Flannery gets the ball. This is it to O'Toole. Flannery then drives in the lane, receives the pass back from O'Toole, and just puts it in for the blue streaks. Nice play. Andrew Keller now looking to return the favor with a layup of his own, and he's able to do so coast to coast there for Andrew Keller for two. Yeah, and Keller just used his body in that position in order to get that shot off and in for the Purple Raiders. Flannery has it now. He will give that one on up to Sartan. Sartan now down low inside to Flannery once more. Nice kick out to O'Toole. Great ball movement here by the Blue Streaks as Sartan fires up the floater. That's no good. Rebound goes to Scariotis. Braden Poole gives it right back to Scariotis. As the freshman will bring it up now for Mount Union. Down low inside, they go to Christian Parker. Parker looking to go to work on Flannery. Goes baseline, up strong for the reverse layup, and it's good for Christian Parker. Yeah, receives the ball on one end of the baseline, uses the whole baseline, and reverses with that left hand. So it's now 18-8 as Abu Monday's three is no good. Offensive rebound though to Mason Trubisky. Trubisky's going to draw the foul there on Ethan Stanislavski. It's going to be Stanislavski's second personal, fourth team foul here of the half as Chris Painter and Darrell Newsom will check in here for the Raiders. We'll actually get a timeout before they're able to do so. So 11.29 to go here in the first half. 
Mountain Union on top right now, 18 to 8 here in this one. And Davis, so far, we're near the halfway mark of this first half. What's really stood out to you from the Purple Raiders so far in this one that's allowed them to build this lead? Yeah, so far the shooting percentage has been really good for the Purple Raiders, shooting 8 for 13 to start this game, just over 60%. And it's actually two for six from beyond the arc at a 33% clip right there. It's doing a good job of putting that ball in the basket when it really counts. The only thing they need to change is that rebound battle. Obviously, uh, John Carroll is only down by one rebound to the Purple Raiders, but Purple Raiders had a hard time grabbing off of, uh, uh, excuse me, the defensive rebound on one of John Carroll's possessions. So it kind of had me worried a little bit, but thankfully we've been, been cleaning it up a little bit as of late. Yeah, that's for sure, as this possession for JCU is actually coming off an offensive rebound as they'll have it out of bounds here from underneath the basket. As for the Raiders, it's Christian Parker, Andrew Keller, Mike Scariotis, Chris Painter Jr., and Darrell Newsom. And for JCU, it's almost an entirely new five. Omar Abu Maidam will still remain in the game here. David Gentry will re-enter the game, as will Eric Hanna. Hugh Brown will see his first action. And P.J. Flannery remains out there as well for John Carroll. Abumande now will give that up to Hugh Brown. Brown now over to Flannery. Flannery being guarded closely here by Newsom. Seven on the shot clock. Gives it up to Hannah. Hannah now drives. Goes up for the layup. It's no good. Rebound Parker. Yeah, great defense right there from Chris Painter Jr. as Darrell Newsom takes up that layup. Misses, but Andrew Keller gets the rebound and puts it in for the Purple Raiders. Yeah, great execution there by the Purple Raiders and great heads up play by Andrew Keller to get that second chance points. As at the other end, Scariotis comes away with the steal. Painter now on the break, gives it up to Keller. Keller right back over to Chris Painter. They're gonna slow things down here. Scariotis now dump, dumps it down low inside to Christian Parker. Parker makes easy work there for two. Yeah, Parker didn't waste any time right there. Looked over his shoulder and just brought it up strong to the backboard. 22-8 Mountain Union now their largest lead in this one as Hugh Brown fires up the contested mid-range. It's no good. Parker almost came up with the rebound. Instead, it's hit, bounced into the hands of Mike Scariotis. Scariotis now over to Andrew Keller. As Keller is guarded closely here by Abumande. He's now down low inside. Painter tried to feed Christian Parker. Parker fighting for that inside post position. Draws the foul on David Gentry. And the Raiders will have it out of bounds underneath the basket. Yeah, Gentry not liking the call right there. But I think it was the right call from the referee. Tried to do a little bit too much and poke that ball away from Christian Parker. So after a quick break on that bench, Connor O'Toole will return here for JCU as Keller inbounds it to a wide open Newsom 4-3. That's no good. Rebound Hugh Brown. Yeah, even though that was a miss, it was a good screen right there from Parker to get Newsom open in the, in the corner. O'Toole gives it up to Abumande. Back to O'Toole. Now over to Hugh Brown. Brown crosses over, kicks it out to O'Toole. O'Toole now back to Brown. Nice two-man action, but Brown had his foot out of bounds. Ball back to Mount Union. William Wallace will re-enter the game here for the Blue Streaks as there's 9.57 left to go here in the first half. Raiders on top 22-8 here on 91.1 WRMU. As Keller inbounds it to Scariotis and Keller will get it right back and bring things up now for Mount Union. As Keller drives now, it's cut off on the baseline by Hannah and Brown. Kicks up Scariotis, Scariotis now in the corner to Painter. Painter with a nice move, gives it up to Christian Parker. Beautiful pass there. Parker gets easy too. Yeah, Chris Painter Jr. doing beautiful fake dribble moves. Found himself in the baseline. Looked like he was going to lay it up there, but a nice dish to Christian Parker in for that easy chopper. It's at the other end. Eric Hanna fires up a three. That's no good. On the floor, Andrew Keller goes. Keller grabs that ball. I believe he's going to draw a personal foul here as well. Great hustle right there by Andrew Keller as he is indeed going to draw the foul on David Gentry, and the ball will go back to Mountain Union. Yeah, and that play right there reminded me of Matthew Della from Dover when he <laughs> still played for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, Andrew Keller got a, the tiniest glimpse at that ball, saw it was loose and really just pounced on it against William Wallace. Did a great job of securing the ball and getting it for the Purple Raiders. Now Keller channeling his inner his inner Matthew Delavidova right there, that's for sure, as he brings it up now for the Raiders. Fires up the shot, that's no good. Rebound to Hugh Brown. As off that last stoppage in play, 
A substitution here, Mason Trubisky returns for John Carroll as Brown goes up for the shot. It's blocked by Scary Otis. Will remain John Carroll ball. Yeah, great play right there from Scary Otis. I thought Hugh Brown might have gotten a step on him, but he recovered, went up with Brown's shot, and obviously blocked it. Did a great job right there on the defensive side of the ball. So Jackson Sartain returns here for JCU. As off the inbound, Trubisky will give it to Wallace. Wallace now drives. Try to get it back to Trubisky, but it was out of his reach. Trubisky tries to save it, but it's out of bounds. Ball back to the Raiders. And if Trubisky would have crowded that pass, I don't think he had much of a chance to get that shot off, though, as Parker was coming in for the epic block as Painter inbounds it here to Keller. Keller will bring things up once more for Mount Union. Andrew Keller now down low to Parker. That one's knocked out of bounds though by Trubisky will remain Raider basketball. Yeah, and Mount Union's defense has really shown up in this game as John Carroll has failed to hit double digits with just under 8.45 left to play in this first half. Wonderful drive right there from the Purple Raiders. As Parker fires a mid-range shot right there from the free throw line, hand in his face, it doesn't matter. Christian Parker now with eight points for the Raiders. 26 to 8. The Raiders are rolling here on a 12 0 run as Wallace's three is blocked by Keller. Keller grabs the rebound, throws it off Trubisky's leg. My goodness, this Raider defense has come to play here tonight. It'll be Mountain Union basketball. First, we're going to give credit with Andrew Keller diving on that ball and then a beautiful block shot and the defense and, excuse me, the awareness to look at Mason Trubisky, realize he was falling out of bounds. Andrew Keller was third off of Trubisky's leg and out of bounds. Beautiful play right there to keep Mount Union with that basketball. Raiders are absolutely rolling here now, ladies and gentlemen, holding John Carroll to 17% from the floor as they, they've opened up an 18-point lead. And we're going to take a score update here as well for the women's basketball team and their game against the Marietta Pioneers right now. The upset is still very much on as down the OAC quarterfinals, and that matchup in Marietta, the Raiders are on top right now, 60-46 to 46 with 8.34 left to go on that contest. If they are able to hold on to that one, then they will play the winner of Baldwin Wallace and Muskingum, which actually just tipped off not too long ago. So hoping the Raiders women's basketball team can hold on there. Madison Hensley is leading the women's basketball team right now with 14 points, while Sarah Meech is 12. Raiders trying to pull off the first round upset. And taking a look at the game that means a lot to the men's basketball team here as well. The winner of this game will go on to play the winner of Capital and Heidelberg. Capital right now is 7.53 left to go in the first half. Is on top of the student princes down in Heidelberg. 24-15 to in that one. And so Braden Poole is going to inbound it here for the Raiders. It's Poole, Painter, Scariotis, Parker, and Newsom. As Poole will give it up to Scariotis. Over to Painter as... JCU coming out in a bit of a press. Raiders are able to break it pretty easily, though, as Newsom now fires up a three from the corner. In and out, no good. Rebound to Parker, and his second chance points is good. Yeah, Chris Painter Jr. and Michael Scariotis being able to break that press was really nice, and finding Darrell Newsom wide open in the corner. Couldn't hit it, unfortunately, but Christian Parker cleaned up the scraps there. Cleaned up the scraps, indeed. This is now 28-8 Mount Union here. As uh, Sartan now gives it up to William Wallace. Wallace now looking to go to work on Scariotis. He dumps that out to Hannah who fires up a deep three. That one's good. JCU hits double digits. It's now 28 to 11. Yeah, huge bucket right there from JCU. Obviously something pretty hard so far in this game. Nice, beautiful right-handed pass from William Wallace to Eric Hanna in order to get that three in. At the other end, Scariotis gets the defender off his feet. Can't get the shot to go. However, Christian Parker was fighting for that offensive rebound. He's going to draw the loose ball foul here. The Raiders will get an extra possession. Yeah, Eric Hanna definitely uh, grappled or I should say grabbed onto Christian Parker. Kind of hooked him a little bit there with his arm in order for Christian Parker to try and get that rebound, which was the reason for that call against Eric Hanna. Parker takes a seat and gets a nice ovation. He's got 10 points off that Raider bench already as Logan Hill re-enters the game here for Mountain Union. Hill now has it off the inbound. Fakes the handoff to Painter and gives it up to Scariotis. Chris Painter Jr. now back with it at the Mountain Union logo. Gives it up to Newsom now. The 10 on the shot clock. Newsom goes to work down low inside the hill. That one might have been partially blocked there as JCU comes up with it. Yeah, great defense right there from Mason Trubisky. Really interfering that shot against Logan Hill. 
This is Eric Hanna now. He gives that up to Connor O'Toole. O'Toole now with seven minutes left to go in the half. Trailing here 28-11 is John Carroll as Hanna fires up another deep three. No good. Rebound Painter. Painter now brings it up for the Raiders. Looks to go to work on Hanna. Takes a screen from Hill. Dumps it off to Scariotis. Scariotis now. Wants to get it to Braden Poole, but that one's tipped by William Wallace off the foot of Braden Poole. We'll go back to JCU. So nice defense there by the Blue Streaks as Omar Abumande will check back in here for the Blue Streaks. It's now 6.45 left to go in this half. 28-11. Your Raiders are on top in this one. O'Toole inbounds it to Abumande. Abumande right back to O'Toole. A tool now will hand that off on the perimeter to Eric Hanna as Hanna looks to go to work. Hanna pump fakes. Might have gotten away with the travel there, but nonetheless, he misses the shot. Scariotis comes up with the rebound and gives it to Hill. Yeah, I'm going to agree with you right there on, on that one, Jacob. Looks like Hanna did get away with a little bit of travel. As Chris Painter Jr. pulls up in transition, mid-range jumper in and good for the Purple Raiders. Great transition shot right there by Chris Painter Jr. Extends that lead back out to 19 as O'Toole fires up a deep three. That's well short. Rebound there to Sartan. Sartan fires up his second chance. It's blocked by Newsom into the hands of Scariotis. Yeah, Sartan looking for some kind of foul right there, but a very clean block from Darrell Newsom, which was the reason Mount Union got that ball back. Newsom now on the perimeter. Takes a screen from Poole. Fires up a three. That's too long. No good. Rebound to the Blue Streaks. Almonde now over to O'Toole. O'Toole down low inside to Mason Trubisky. Trubisky looking to go to work. A nice move here on Hill. Kicks it back out to Sartan. Sartan now fires up the shot. He got fouled on that shot by Chris Painter Jr. And that will send Jackson Sartan to the free throw line for two. Yeah, good job right there from Sartan just to stop where he was and pull up for that mid-range. Chris Painter Jr. definitely leaned into his arm right there, causing that foul. So Sartan... We'll head to the line here. He's just got two points in this half. Like how Davis mentioned at the top of the broadcast, he's averaging over 17 a night. He's now got three points. It's now 30 to 12 here. P.J. Flannery checks in for the Blue Streaks, and Andrew Keller re-enter the game here for Mount Union. Yeah, and to have Scary Otis and to have Keller and to have Chris Painter Jr. really be the ball handlers in the situation where Stanislavski is out of the game due to the fouls as of right now. He's only got two. He did not foul out. But being able to have those younger guys handle the ball, kind of like Stanislavski does, is very key and very important to a deep turning run. Yeah, that's a great point right there. Mountain Union very deep on the guard front. As at the other end, Poole fires up a floater from the baseline. It's no good. Rebound to the Blue Streaks. Yeah, good look right there from Braden Poole. Found himself open. Just couldn't hit that little floater. Trubisky now over to O'Toole. O'Toole on the perimeter. He draws the foul as Logan Hill did catch him with the body. Don't know if that necessarily draws a foul all the time, but nonetheless, they call the foul here on Logan Hill. It's going to be his first personal team, sixth of the half. Yeah, and one more foul for the Purple Raiders would leave uh, John Carroll to that bonus, which means they'd be shooting free throws throughout the rest of this half. Abumande hands it off to O'Toole, right back to Abumande. Abumande now looks to go to work on Scariotis. Nice move there, but Scariotis, great defense, just better offense from Abumande. And I like how you said that, Jacob. Really nice defensive pressure from Scariotis. Abumande just did a great job of getting that shot up and over the hand of Scariotis and in for the Blue Streaks. It's now 30-15 to 15 Mountain Union with 4.47 to go in the half here as Keller Goes up for the shot, but he's going to get called here for a carrying violation. It's going to be a turnover back to JCU. So JCU trying to creep back into this one. Mountain Union's doubled them up so far. As here on 91.1 WRMU, Raiders in good shape on top, 30-15. to 15. Stanislavski's going to re-enter the game here with those two fouls for the Raiders. As... It'll be inbounded here, P.J. Flannery to Abumande. JCU brings things up now. Abumande hands it off to O'Toole. O'Toole takes a screen from Flannery. Around the perimeter, they go to Sartain. Sartain now over to Mason Trubisky. Trubisky thought about the three instead. Goes up for the layup. That's no good. Rebound Keller. Yeah, and great drive right there from Trubisky. Just got his shot interfered with there from Logan Hill. Caused that miss. Keller gives up to Stanislavski. Stanislavski takes a screen from Hill. Back over now to Andrew Keller in the corner who drives. 
thought about the shot, and he's going to put up the shot because he gets fouled right there, and I'll send Andrew Keller to the free throw line here for two. Yeah, Keller doing a great job of getting to that baseline, getting underneath the basket, trying to draw a foul, which he did. Results him at the line for two. So Andrew Keller will head to the free throw line here. Keller, the junior from Painesville, Ohio, and Riverside High School, puts up that first free throw, and it is good. Makes it 31-15, Keller now with five points off that Raider bench. So Keller tries to hit both free throws here. Second one is up. That one's no good. So JCU will have it now. Trailing in this one by 16 with around four minutes to go here in the first half. Connor O'Toole now gives it up to Mason Trubisky. Trubisky over to Albumande. Albumande now to Flannery. Back to Albumande as Jackson Sartain now. Fakes the shot, gives up to Trubisky, who fires up the three. That's no good. Rebound, Keller. And even though they missed that shot, John Keller doing a great job of moving the ball around on the offensive side, doing a great job of finding the open man. Keller now tried to feed Logan Hill down low inside. That pass was too wide, though, for Logan Hill. And the ball will go back here to JCU as we have a timeout here on the floor. 3.46 left to go here in the first half. Raiders still on top in this one, 31 to 15. And with the stoppage in play, seems to be a good time here to take a look at the women's basketball matchup. 4.47 left to go in that one. The upset is still on as your Purple Raider women's basketball team still on top here. 63-54 still led by Madison Hensley with those 14 points as the Raiders try to advance on to the OAC semifinals where they will be meeting up with the winner of Baldwin Wallace in Muskingum. Which, a score update from that game for women's basketball, if the internet wants to cooperate here. <laughs> the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets on top of that one, 35-19, as they approach halftime up in Berea. So, really, if Mount Union is able to hang on against the Pioneers in that one, the women's basketball team seem to be on their way to a date up in Baldwin Wallace for the semifinals, which would be a rematch of last year's OAC semifinals for women's basketball as well. Yeah, and after watching the women's basketball team play throughout this winter here in Alliance, Ohio, recent, as of recently, before they went into OAC play, did a great job of playing with a lot of heart and not giving up at all, and I think that really tells what kind of a team they are in the OAC tournament. Anything can happen, especially in postseason play, too. So who knows? Maybe both Raiders teams can come away with some wins here tonight as Sartan goes up for the shot, and he gets it to go. He's going to have an and-one opportunity here as Darrell Newsom's going to get called for the foul, and Sartain heads to the line for one more. Don't know if I agree with the call necessarily. I thought Darrell Newsom had some pretty good defense right there on Sartan. Nonetheless, Sartan made that beautiful bank shot and put that his only free throw up and in for the John Carroll Blue Streaks. It's now 31-18 Raiders here. 3.37 to go in the half on 91.1 WRMU. As the five out there for the Raiders right now, Braden Poole, Andrew Keller, Mike Scariotis, Chris Painter Jr., and Christian Parker. For the Blue Streaks is Omar Abumande, Jackson Sartain, Mason Trubisky, Connor O'Toole, and PJ Flannery. As JCU comes out in the zone here, and now Poole, Fires cross court over to Painter, who fires up the three. That one's good. Painter looks at the bench as well, and that's going to get a technical foul on Chris Painter Jr. for chirping at that John Carroll bench. So nice three-pointer from Chris Painter Jr., but the extracurriculars are going to get him called with a technical foul. Yeah, and, you know, Chris Painter Jr. making a beautiful three-point shot in the corner by a nice feed from the other side of the baseline by Braden Poole as there's some more deliberation going on. Uh, but regardless, he did contain the emotions. I understand it is tournament play, and even then, it is John Carroll, who is Mount Union's biggest rival. Uh, just need to do a little bit better of a job, just containing the emotion. I understand it's a big game and all that, but overall, didn't, didn't necessarily agree with the technical foul call, but it is what it is as Sartan hit his first free throw up at the line. Yeah, and right there, that's just the case where you simply just got to keep your mouth shut in that situation. It's unfortunate he gets called for the technical. Beautiful three right there as Painter is going to take a seat on that Raider bench. Sartain hits both technical free throws here as Jonah McCartney is going to see his first action here tonight for the Purple Raiders. 3.18 left to go in the half. JCU is going to have the ball here as well, trailing in this one 34-20. 
P.J. Flannery now inbounds it to Omar Abumande. As Abumande brings it up now, guarded closely by Jonah McCartney. Abumande now up to Flannery. As P.J. Flannery will give that up to Sartain. Sartain now down low inside to Mason Trubisky. Trubisky trying to go to work on Parker. Great defense by Christian Parker. Forces the miss into the hands of Scariotis. Yeah, Trubisky tried to go to his right. Realized he couldn't against Christian Parker. Tried to go back to his left. Still couldn't get it against Christian Parker. Just beautiful defense all around right there from Parker. Pull with the extra pass over to Jonah McCartney who fires up the open three. That's no good. Rebound JCU. O'Toole now gives it up to Flannery. Flannery fires up a three. Nice contest by McCartney, but Flannery is able to get the three to go there. Yeah, and just good transition three right there from the blue streaks. Flannery up and in. Or excuse me. Uh, nice three-point shot right there. 34-23, JCU trying to get on a little run here as Keller now down low inside to Parker. Parker looking to go to work on Flannery. Goes up for the shot. It's no good. Poole's tipping is no good. Raiders still getting extra possession, though, as McCartney gets the rebound. Kicks out the Scariotis for three. No good. Fourth try, though, as McCartney with his second offensive rebound here. Scariotis now has it for Mount Union. Two minutes left to go in the half now. As Parker with 10 on the shot clock fires up a deep two. That one's good. And one, Christian Parker. Near three-pointer. It's going to be a deep two. He draws the foul, and he's got a chance for an and one opportunity. Yeah, had an opportunity right there. If Christian Parker was just a step or two backwards to see a beautiful four-point play right here. Nonetheless, Christian Parker hesitant on whether he should drive it, pass it, whatever. Pulled up, hit that beautiful long-range jumper right by the three-point line, and got fouled in the process as well as he's up at the line for one for the Purple Raiders. We'll see if Parker can complete that three-point play, and he can. It's now 37-23 Mountain Union here. So Abu Mamde now brings it up, guarded closely once more here by McCartney. Takes a screen from David Gentry, who just re-entered the game, and oh, they're going to call a foul here. Very far away from the ball on Christian Parker. Mountain Union crowd and Parker do not agree with it. I don't really agree with it either. But nonetheless, Omar Abumande heads the line here for a one-on-one -on -one opportunity. Yeah, what it really looked like was Christian Parker kind of snuck up on Abumande on that play. And I think Abumande just lost possession or even just lost control of the ball overall. Christian Parker was just at the wrong place at the wrong time. Abumande hits the front end of the one-on-one. -on -one. It's now 37-24 Raiders. As Christian Parker still talking to the referee about that last foul call. And Abu Mamde now will shoot the second. That one's good as well. 37-25 Raiders. Andrew Keller will bring it up now for Mount Union. Led by as many as 20 here in this first half. As Keller with JCU still playing in that 1-3-1 zone. Kicks it out to Scariotis. Scariotis fires up the open three. That's no good. Fight for the offensive rebound. Still up there. McCartney once more comes up with it. Jordan McCartney with a lot of hustle off this Mountain Union bench. Draws the foul. Heads the line for one and one. And yet again, Jordan McCartney coming up huge with the offensive rebound. Third offensive rebound in this game so far. And he just came off the bench just a few minutes ago. So having a real impact in the game so far. Looks like all the Raiders in this game have had some kind of an impact on the way this game has gone. It's been a great game so far for the Purple Raiders overall as a team. So McCartney now fires up that first free throw. That's too strong, no good. Rebound to Mason Trubisky, who just checked back in here for the Blue Streaks, as Abu Mamde now will bring it up for John Carroll. He hands it off to O'Toole. O'Toole now back to Abu Mamde. As Abu Mamde kicks it back out to Connor O'Toole. Around the perimeter they go to Sartain. Sartain back over to O'Toole. O'Toole now puts it on the floor. Goes up strong for the shot. Great defense by Parker, forces the miss. Andrew Keller brings it up now for Mount Union. As Keller picks up his dribble, gives it to Scariotis. Scariotis out in the corner to McCartney. McCartney fires up the shot. That one's good. A deep three from Jonah McCartney in the corner. Forces a JCU timeout as the Raiders on top now, 40 to 25. Yeah, good ball moving right there from the Raiders. Scariotis looked like he was going to cut in and try and drive into the lane with that ball, but dished it out to McCartney on the wing and in. Up and in for the Purple Raiders. Beautiful three-point shot. So Raiders back on top here by 15. Taking a look now at that other Raider basketball game. 54 seconds left. It's coming down to the wire down in Marietta as the Raiders women's basketball team is on top 65 to 61. 
We're hoping that they hang on. They can advance to the OAC semifinals with a win there. Just 54 seconds left. Raiders holding on to a four-point lead. But here at the MAC, the Raiders have been in control of this one so far as they are on top now, 40 to 25. They got off to a 10 to two start in this one. John Carroll creeped back, cut the lead down to six. But then, of course, a 14-0 run opened the game up for a 20-point lead for the Raiders. And now they find themselves on top by 15 here with 57 seconds left to go in the half. Flannery will inbound it here to Abumande as he crosses the half-court timeline. Abumande now hands it off to Connor O'Toole. O'Toole takes the screen from Flannery. He'll kick it over to Trubisky. Trubisky now over to Sartain. Sartain now back to Trubisky. Trubisky fires cross court to Flannery over to O'Toole. Great ball movement here as Mason Trubisky is on the ground in considerable pain. He's grabbing his ankle and it could have been on that collision right there with Jonah McCartney when he kicked that ball out. But Trubisky having trouble getting up. He's able to get up now on his own power with the help of a teammate. He'll certainly take a seat. Mount Union gives him an applause here as Trubisky will sit out for the final 39 seconds of this half. Eric Hanna will re-enter for John Carroll. Yeah, and it's always disheartening to see someone, whether it is on your home team or the away team, go down with an injury. All these players are playing hard, wanting to win this game, and being able to see someone who got knocked down as, due to an injury is just, just a little sad. Hopefully Trubisky can recover during the halftime and come back out for the second half. That's for sure. We wish Mason the best of luck there with his injury as Eric Hanna now, like how I mentioned, re-enters the game here for the injured Trubisky as O'Toole gives it to Flannery. Flannery now to Abu Mamde. There's nine seconds on the shot clock here, 35 seconds on the game clock. Abu Mamde now looking to go to work on Hill. Four seconds, three seconds now as Hanna with one second on the shot clock needs to get the shot up. And he gets it up, but it's no good. Rebound there to the Raiders. Scarios will bring it up for the final shot. It's now Andrew Keller with it. As there's 17 seconds to go in the half. Raiders on top by 15 here on 91.1 WRMU. As Keller holding it here for that final shot. Gives it up to McCartney. McCartney down low inside the pool. The pool last touched it right there as it was knocked out of bounds. And the ball will go back to JCU for the final five seconds. And an offensive substitution here for sure for JCU as William Wallace checks into the game to try to get one final shot up here for John Carroll. O'Toole will give it up to William Wallace. Wallace now looking to put up a shot. He gives it up to O'Toole now. O'Toole at the buzzer, fires up the three. No good. And with that, the Purple Raiders will end the half leading this one 40 to 25 in this OAC quarterfinal matchup against the John Carroll Blue Streaks. Davis, what did you like from the Raiders there in that first half? Yeah, did really well on both sides of the ball, whether they were you know, driving into the lane or kicking it out to a mid-range jumper or even blocking shots or stealing the ball. Great overall performance from the Purple Raiders, and hopefully we get to see more of this great play in the second half. Yeah, that's for sure, as the Raiders really had a lot of key contributors in that first half. Christian Parker, though, the leading scorer all throughout the regular season for Mountain Union, continuing to lead this team in scoring here tonight. He has 13 points for Mountain Union off that Raider bench. And taking a look once more now at that women's basketball game, still not quite over. Raiders are not out of the clear yet. They're on top by three now with 15 seconds left to go in Marietta. When we return from the halftime break, we will have a final score there for you. Hopefully, the women's basketball team can hang on the final 15 seconds early. They've now extended the lead to four. So wishing the Purple Raiders women's basketball team the best of luck. We'll have that final score update for you outside of the halftime break here on 91.1 WRMU and the men's basketball live stream. But we'll take a break here for halftime. Be back momentarily to get you ready for the OAC quarterfinal second half of Mount Union and John Carroll.
back here on 91.1 WRMU and the men's basketball live stream as we are here with the OAC quarterfinal matchup here at the MAC. Your men's basketball team, Purple Raiders, on top in this one. 40 to 25 over the visiting John Carroll Blue Streaks. Jacob Attar and Davis Roby here with you on the call. And Davis, really a dominant first half there by the Raiders. What really stood out to you the most that's allowed the Raiders to open up this lead? Yeah, the shooting percentage between the two teams is very apparent as John Carroll's only shooting 21% from the field and the, and the Purple Raiders are shooting just under 50 at 48. So doing a great job putting that ball into the basket, but as well as winning that rebound battle, very important in this game as Mount Union has at least has 10 more rebounds than John Carroll did in that first half. So overall, good performance on the boat, both offensive and defensive, def, excuse me, defensive side of the ball from the Purple Raiders. Not too many turnovers in the game, only eight combined between the two teams. But overall, Mount Union looking just to keep up the same performance they put on in that first half. And if they do that, I could see them walking away with a win. Yeah, that's for sure. The Raiders open up a lead as big as 20 in that first half. They really held the lead for the whole entire half as well. Nice job so far by the Raiders taking care of business in this one. But we have an important score update for all of you uh, faithful Mountain Union fans here on 91.1 WRMU in the men's basketball live stream. Purple Raider women's basketball team, they were able to pull off that upset over the Marietta Pioneers in the OAC quarterfinals. They defeated Marietta by a final score 68 to 64 with Madison Hensley finishing with 14 points. Emma Cannon with 13 points and 12 rebounds while Sarah Meach had 12 points. And so the Raiders are heading to the semifinals of the OAC tournament in women's basketball. They'll be facing the winner of Baldwin Wallace and Muskingum. Baldwin Wallace currently on top at the half against Muskingum, 43-19. So all signs pointing to the Raiders going up to Berea to take on the Baldwin Wallace Yellow Jackets in the OAC tournament there in the semifinals. And with five seconds left to go in the fourth quarter and another matchup in women's basketball, Ohio Northern is about to pull off the upset on Otterbein. They currently are leading 60-47, to 47, and Wilmington is currently trailing the top seed of John Carroll Blue Streaks in women's basketball, 42-30 to 30 right now, 5:01 left to go in the third quarter in that one. And taking a look at the men's basketball scores, the game that we're keeping our close eye on here is the winner of this one. We'll move on to play the winner of Capital and Heidelberg. Capital right now on top of Heidelberg, 33-31. That would be a potential upset as well. If the Raiders hold on in this one, they would be hosting the winner of this game for the OAC semifinals. And the only two other OAC quarterfinal matchups here tonight have yet to take action. Bolton Wallace will be traveling down to Otterbein, as that is the 4-5 matchup right there. And then, of course, the 1-8 and eight matchup, Ohio Northern, will be taking on Marietta later tonight. But with all those score updates, we're now getting set to resume action here. It's going to be the starting five for the Blue Streaks. It's going to be Eric Hanna, Connor O'Toole, William Wallace, Jackson Sartain, and David Gentry, and for your Raiders, it's going to be Braden Poole, Ethan Stanislavski, Logan Hill, Darrell Newsom, and Chris Painter Jr., the starting five as well for Mount Union. Newsom will inbound it here to Stanislavski as John Carroll comes out with a little bit of pressure here. Poole now, cross court over to Newsom. Nice grab there by Darrell. He's able to save it to Stanislavski. Stanislavski now over to Chris Painter Jr., as Painter looks to get things set here for the Raiders. He gives it up to Logan Hill in the high post. He swings it over to Stanislavski, fires up the three. That one's good. Stanislavski gets the Raiders started with the three in the second half. Yeah, Stanislavski just found himself open beyond the three-point line, pulled the trigger, and in for the Purple Raiders. Good start to the second half. 43-25 Mountain Union now as David Gentry looks to go to work on Hill. He kicks it out to O'Toole. Nice extra pass over to Hannah who pump fakes. Fires up a three and returns the favor with a corner three of its own. It's 43-28. Yeah, and a great answer right there from the blue streaks. Gentry had it in the post, dished it out, and then Hannah received the ball, put it in for the blue streaks. Wonderful basket. As a minute into the second half, Raiders still on top here by 15 as Painter now. Try to get it over to Poole. Just a miscommunication right there. It's turned over right into the hands of Sartain. Yeah, Braden Poole wasn't really looking in the direction of Chris Painter Jr. So good job by the Blue Streaks as Darrell Newsom comes up with a very nice and quick steal right there for the Purple Raiders. Yeah, Newsom gets in the passing lane right there. Is able to come away with the steal as Painter brings it up now for Mount Union. Painter will hand it off to Newsom. Newsom now takes screen from Logan Hill. Has it on the perimeter, he drives, goes up for the shot. It's blocked though by Gentry, and up ahead, John Carroll now gives up to Sartain. Sartain 
goes away for the easy fast break layup. Yeah, great transition right there from the, the blue streaks. Gentry staying all the way with Newsom blocking that shot and Sartain getting that ball right by the rim and putting it in for the purple, or excuse me, for the blue streaks. 43-30 now as Chris Painter takes a screen from Hill, fires up the contestant mid-range, and that one's good. Chris Painter Jr. now with nine points. It's 45-30. Did a nice job of taking that screen right there and just pulling up right where the free throw line is, up and in, and good for Chris Painter Jr. It's at the other end. Newsom gets in front of the passing lane once more, goes up for the dunk, and he puts the exclamation point on the fast break, raising the roof. Raiders on top by 17. Yeah, just an easy steal right there for Newsom. Like he, like he did earlier, just jumped that passing lane, took it uncontested, slammed it in for the Purple Raiders. As Newsom almost came up with another steal here, nice defense on Sartain as now Gentry has it on the baseline, looking to go to work on Logan Hill. He now goes up for the contested shot. They're going to get Logan Hill here with the foul. And I don't know about that one, but nonetheless, David Gentry will head to the free throw line for two. Yeah, nothing much Logan Hill could do on that play as Gentry just did a little nice fadeaway move in order to draw that foul against Hill up at the line for two for the Blue Streaks. So 17-25 left to go in this one. Raiders on top by 17 as David Gentry looks for his first two points here tonight. First free throw is short. Score remains 47-30 as Omar Abumadam will return here for the Blue Streaks. As Gentry gets set for his second free throw, that one's up and good. 47-31, Mount Union. And Poole now will inbound it as John Carroll comes out in the press. He inbounds it to Painter. Painter now brings it up. It's able to cross half court. Takes a screen now from Hill. Gets things set now for the Raiders. Once more, a screen set by Hill. Driving is Painter. He can't get the shot to go. Rebound 202, but Painter comes away with the steal. Gives it to Stanislavski for the three. That one's good. A nice three off the steal. Stanislavski makes it a 19-point game. Yeah, even after the missed shot, Chris Painter Jr. doing a good job of staying with the play all the way through and getting that steal and giving it to Stanislavski in for that beautiful three-pointer. At the other end, David Gentry with a quick basket of his own. Nice pump fake. Gets to the rim for the easy two. Raiders on top. 50-33 to now here on 91.1. WRMU is Newsome. Looks to drive. Gives it up to Braden Poole. Poole now looking to go to work with a nice spin move here on O'Toole. But great defense by O'Toole. Forces Poole to pass it out on the perimeter. Stanislavski now fires up the mid-range shot. That's in and out. No good. Tip though back into the hands of Stanislavski. Painter now on the perimeter, takes a screen from Hill. Thought about the three and he'll fire it now. That one's in and out, no good. Fight for the rebound, they say it's last off Abu Nadum, and the ball will stay with Mountain Union. Yeah, and the Purple Raiders doing a great job so far in this half on not giving up on the offensive side of the ball, really putting a lot of pressure on the blue streaks in order to get that ball into the basket. Hugh Brown will return here for John Carroll as Painter inbounds it from underneath the basket. He inbounds it to Stanislavski. Off the inbound, he fires up a quick mid-range shot. Goes down to the ground and hits it. It's 52-33. Yeah, Stanislavski pretty sure got hit after that shot, but nonetheless drained it in for the Purple Raiders. Abu Minim with a nice fancy ball, ball work right there. And he's going to draw the foul on Brayden Poole. Poole's going to get called for his first personal foul, second team foul of the half as John Carroll has it out of bounds underneath the basket. If anything, I thought they were going to call a kick ball violation right there. It looked like it went off of Braden Poole's foot. I thought he fouled the player. O'Toole now is guarded closely by Poole off the inbounds. He goes up strong for the shot, and Braden Poole's going to get called for his second foul in about a five-second span here. And Connor O'Toole heads to the line for two. Yeah, but great awareness right there from O'Toole, knowing that Braden Poole got that first foul, went right back at him to draw his second. Good, uh, excuse me, good play right there from O'Toole. And with that, Coach Feline's going to take a timeout here for the Raiders. As 15.57 left to go in this one, Mountain Union has extended their lead to 19 They're on top, 52-33. And Davis, what have you liked so far about this start in the second half for Mountain Union? Yeah, the Raiders really haven't been giving up on these plays on the offensive side of the ball, doing a great job of staying with it, whether that's a tip out back to the top of the key or whether that's a steal. You know, just doing a great job of not giving up and really pushing hard against the Blue Streaks. Yeah, that's for sure. The Raiders have come out with some 
Nice offense to start this one. Christian Parker is going to check in for the Raiders out of this timeout as they've been able to extend that lead to 19 here. As taking a look at the five here for John Carroll, will be Omar Abu Maidam. It'll be Jackson Sartain, P.J. Flannery, Hugh Brown, and Connor O'Toole will be at the free throw line for John Carroll. And for the Raiders out of the timeout, it'll be Chris Painter Jr., Darrell Newsom, Braden Poole, Ethan Stanislavski, and Christian Parker. So Connor O'Toole, he's got two points here tonight for JCU. He's going to try to cut back into that lead here. As he heads to the free throw line. And the first free throw is up. And that one's good. Friendly bounce off the rim. It's 52 to 34, Mount Union. Taking a look once more at that score update from Capital and Heidelberg. Heidelberg is now on top in that one. 38-35 with 15-22 to go in that game as O'Toole gets the second one to go as well. It's 52-35 now. Mount Union here on 91.1 WRMU. Stanislavski gives it up to Poole. Poole down low inside to Parker. Parker fires up the nice baby hook. In and out, no good. Fight for the rebound. Sartain comes up with it. Yeah, good job by Christian Parker to get that shot up in the post. Unfortunately, just couldn't get it to go. Abu Manum now gives it up to the cutting Sartain, but great job right there by Newsom. Gets his hands on it. It is going to remain JCU basketball, though, however. And so... It'll be an inbound here for Omar Abu Maidam from underneath the basket. And Abu Maidam now. Almost got the five second call as he inbounds it to Brown. Brown shot blocked right there by Parker. Stanislavski fought for the rebound, but it's into the hands of Brown. Brown now out to Sartain. Sartain extra pass over to Flannery who fires up the three. That one's good. Nice second chance three right there for PJ Flannery. Yeah, good defense by the Raiders, but Better offense from the blue streaks right there. Great ball movement to get that shot to P.J. Flannery and in beyond the arc. So it's 52-38 now as Chris Painter Jr. brings it up for Mount Union. Painter now picks up his dribble and kicks it over to Braden Poole. Poole fires up the mid-range shot. That's in and out. No good. Rebound Sartain. Sartain gives it up to O'Toole now as O'Toole Right back to a cutting Sartain. Sartain goes up for the shot. Great defense by Newsom. Forces the miss as Stanislavski grabs the rebound. Yeah, John Carroll bench not too happy about that no call right there. As Stanislavski gives it up to Parker at the other end. Chris Parker gets to the rim for the easy two. He's got 15 now as it's 54-38. Yeah, a little too easy right there from Christian Parker. Really didn't have any contest on his shot. As Abu made him throws it right to Chris Painter, Jr. Painter over to Newsom. Newsom down low inside to Parker. Had stripped away by Abu made him, picks it back up, kicks out to Stanislavski for the three. No good. Rebound, Braden Poole. He goes up for the shot. It's partially blocked. It doesn't matter. Braden Poole still gets it to go for two. As John Carroll's going to take a timeout. Raiders back on top by 18. So there's now 14.08 left to go in this one as John Carroll head coach Pete Moran still a little bit upset about no foul call at the other end. He's still talking to the referees, he and his coaching staff. He's got to be careful here that he doesn't get called for a technical. We've already seen one today on Chris Painter Jr. But nonetheless, his team finds themselves trailing by 18 here. But once more, a score update as Heidelberg Holding on to a two-point lead with 14.06 left to go in that one as Student Princes look to face Mountain Union here for a third time if they're able to pull off the win. As Mountain Union, they defeated Capital both times in the regular season. They also, and then they split a pair with Heidelberg. Heidelberg is one of Mountain Union's three losses on the season. So if the Raiders are able to hold on to this one, they would play host to the winner of this game. So it would be Great sight to see if they're able to play the Student Princes once more. The game Davis and I called here at the MAC. Heidelberg actually took it to Mountain Union with a 91-72 victory. So the Raiders would certainly want to avenge that home loss to Heidelberg if they're able to come away with the win. So JCU will inbound it here. It's Connor O'Toole, Omar Abu Maidam, Hugh Brown, Jackson Sartain, and PJ Flannery. And for the Raiders, it's Christian Parker, Darrell Newsom, Ethan Stanislavski, Braden Poole, and Mike Scariotis. 
So O'Toole is going to inbound it here to Abu Matum. He's guarded closely by Mike Scariotis. Abu Matum now will kick it out to Sartain. Sartain almost got called for a backcourt violation instead. He's able to save it to Abu Matum. Abu Matum now looking to go to work on Parker. He gives it up back to Sartain. Sartain fires up a contested mid-range. That one's good. It's 56-40. Yeah, good, good play right there from Sartain. Got that extra step on Newsom and just pulled up from the free throw line, banked it, and went in for the Blue Streaks. Stanislavski now kick it cross court over to Newsom. Newsom now over to Skariotis. Back over to Stanislavski. Stanislavski now jab steps on Abu Matum. Now puts it on the floor. Looks to go to work and he's going to draw the foul here on Abu Matum. It's going to be Abu Matum's second personal, second team foul here of the half. Yeah, Abu Matum very displeased with that call right there. Didn't think he made that time of, that much of contact against Stanislavski but nonetheless still is a foul on him as Mount Union still retains possession of the ball. The correction, that's actually the first team foul out of the half as David Gentry and Eric Hanna return here for JCU. Stanislavski inbounds it from underneath the basket to Christian Parker. Parker hands it back off to Stanislavski. Stanislavski gives it up to Braden Poole. Poole now puts it on the floor, goes up for the layup. That one's good. The Raiders on top, 58-40. Yeah, Braden Poole did a great job of making sure no one got a hand on that ball, really made it a hard for a defender to you know, interfere him on that drive. As at the other end, Flannery's three is short, but it's right into the hands of Jackson Sartain, who gets the easy mid-range shot to go there for JCU. Yeah, Sartain just found himself wide open on the baseline and put it in for the blue streaks. Scariotis will give it up to Poole. Poole now drives baseline, seals off the defender. He's going to draw the foul. He gets hit in the face right there, and I believe they're going to get David Gentry with his fourth personal foul now, as Poole might have gotten poked in the eye and it'll be the second team foul of the half now for JCU. So Poole's actually going to take a seat. He might have even lost a contact there, it looks like, as Chris Painter Jr. re-enters the ball game here for Mountain Union. Uh, actually, Jacob, I'm pretty sure it looks like his nose might be bleeding. I mean, he kept covering his nose throughout the whole time. And, you know, when you, when you get an injury like that, it's never pleasant. I mean, I'm sure you've had a few face injuries in your your time I have what I was, excuse me I have as well playing growing up playing sports it's not always a fun thing but you can usually work through it thankfully and keep pushing through in the game yeah, that was a great eye on that too I did not see him at all holding his nose but it's definitely a nose problem here as they actually call an official's timeout clean up some blood on the court from Braden Poole getting bumped in the nose right there and yeah the nose injuries really are the worst though I can always remember when I played basketball growing up one time I actually took a ball to the face mid-game and had to come out just for a little bit just because of that. It's never a pleasant sight there whenever you're dealing with a face injury. Yeah, getting poked in the eye is probably the worst <laughs> thing that can happen out of that. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure, too. As they're able to clean up the blood there off the court. And so Stanislavski's going to inbound it now for the Raiders. There's 12.48 left to go in this one. Raiders on top by 16 here on 91.1 WRMU. Stanislavski inbounds it to Christian Parker. Parker now over to Darrell Newsom. Newsom now over to Ethan Stanislavski. 14 on the shot clock as he puts it on the floor. Swings out the painter. Extra pass to Scariotis for the three. That one's good. Great ball movement. Sets up Scariotis for the three. Yeah, Scariotis, like you said, Jacob, just good movement right there from the Purple Raiders. Being able to swing the ball from the baseline to the wing to the top of the key and up and in for that three-pointer for Michael Scariotis. At the other end, Chris Painter Jr. almost comes up with an acrobatic steal, but his foot was on the baseline, so the ball will remain here with John Carroll. So two inbounds it to Flannery, who hands it off to Brown. Brown now takes a screen from Flannery. So he looks to go to work on Parker. He kicks that out to Eric Hanna. Hanna now jab steps, fires up a three. That one's no good. Rebound Christian Parker. Parker gives it up to Chris Painter Jr. with the Raiders on top now by 19 here in this second half as Newsom. Hands it off to the freshman, Mike Scariotis. Scariotis now over to Painter. That's Painter over to Stanislavski. Down low inside now, Parker. Extra pass once more to Scariotis for another three. That time it's short. Rebound Eric Hanna. As Connor O'Toole brings it up now for JCU. He kicks it over to Flannery, fires up a transition three. That's well off, no good. Rebound Newsom. Chris Painter now brings it up for Mount Union. He swings it over to Stanislavski. 
Stanislavski now fakes the handoff, fires up a three of his own. That's short as well. Rebound, Hannah. Eric Hanna now gives it up to Hugh Brown on the fast break. Nice move there by Hugh Brown. Gets by the defender for the easy two. Yeah, nice little hesitation hop step right there from Brown and takes it up and in without a contest from the Purple Raiders. So Chris Painter now gives it up to Mike Scariotis. Scariotis over to Newsom. Newsom down low inside to Christian Parker. Parker back out to Scariotis once more for another three. That one's good. Scariotis' is second three of the half makes it 64-44. Yeah, yet again, Scariotis finding himself wide open at the three-point line. You might as well take it while you're there. Connor O'Toole puts it on the floor, picks it up, kicks it out to Hanna for three, and it's raining threes here in the MAC now as Eric Hanna hits a three of his own. It's 64-47. As the referees signal a timeout here. And it's just going to be a timeout on the floor as Andrew Keller and Braden Poole is going to check back in here for Mountain Union as well. The Raiders on top of this one. 64-47 with 10.50 to go here in the half. And once more, another score update from Heidelberg. Student Prince is on top in that one, 47-43 with 11.23 left to go in that one. It's Capital certainly hanging around there. And taking a look at some women's basketball action as well. John Carroll, top seed in the women's basketball region, on top 61-44 over Wilmington in that one. And we're gonna get some other score updates as well from women's basketball as Ohio Northern was able to close out Audubon 62-46. And Mountain Union will certainly be playing up in Berea against the Bowden Wallace Yellow Jackets for the women's basketball semifinals, a rematch of last year's semifinals up in Berea as 9.04 left to go on that one. Bowden Wallace on top, 67 to 31. So both teams are going to take the floor once more here as it's Flannery, O'Toole, Sartain, Eric Hanna, and Hugh Brown for the John Carroll Blue Streaks, four-year Raiders. It's Christian Parker, Mike Scariotis, Brayden Poole, Andrew Keller, and Chris Painter Jr. So Scariotis will inbound it here, and he will get it right back and will bring things up now for Mount Union. As a high pass there, Brayden Poole is able to corral it, gives it up to Andrew Keller. Keller now. Looking to feed Parker, he's able to do so. Parker draws the double team now in the post. Parker out to Scariotis. Scariotis once again, 4-3. That one's good. The freshman with three three-pointers in this half at 67-47. Yet again, Scariotis as, excuse me, Jackson Sertan makes a beautiful pull-up jumper right there. But Scariotis finding himself wide open at the three-point line again and in for the Purple Raiders. We saw earlier this year, that teams can't leave Scariotis open from downtown when he went perfect five for five from the three-point line. As out of bounds right there, it's knocked out of bounds by Hugh Brown, Royal Main Raider basketball with David Gentry returning for the Blue Streaks. But the freshman, he's not known for his scoring necessarily, but he was able to come away one game with a 21-point outing that included five for five from the three-point line. Mike Scariotis making the defense pay here once more in this second half. It's Christian Parker off the inbounds, hands it off to Andrew Keller with 12 on the shot clock. Keller down low inside to Parker. Parker draws the double team, doesn't matter. Gets the shot to go for two. Yeah, even with Gentry and O'Toole all over him, uh, excuse me, uh, Christian Parker does a great job of getting that ball in from the paint into the basket. Off the JCU miss, Andrew Keller brings it up now for Mountain Union. As Keller hands it off to Scariotis. Scariotis thought about the three once again, instead gives it up to Poole. Poole now looking to go to work on Hannah. He drives, goes up for the layup, draws the foul on Eric Hanna. Braden Poole heads to the line here for two. Yeah, Poole does a great job of getting that ball at the free throw line, driving with his right hand to the basket and getting that foul called against Eric Hanna. So Braden Poole, he's got so far in this one 10 points here tonight. He's going to try to get points number 11 and 12, try to extend the Raider lead past 20. 20 has been their largest lead of the night. As Poole's first free throws up and it's good. 70 to 49 Mountain Union now. As William Wallace will return here for the Blue Streaks. 
trying to provide some offense for John Carroll as Braden Poole's second free throw is also good. He's got 12 points now. It's 71-49. 9.25 left to go here on 91.1 WRMU. O'Toole now down low inside to Wallace. Wallace with a nice move down low in the post. He gets to the rim for two. Yeah, Wallace did a great job of getting some good post position against Andrew Keller. And, oh, as Andrew Keller looked like he elbowed William Wallace in the face right there on that, on the drive to the half court. Yeah, and Andrew Keller's lucky right there that he wasn't called for a flagrant foul. The referees might actually be talking about that as that definitely was an elbow to the face. William Wallace was some very aggressive defense, and the referees are probably discussing right now if this should be a flagrant, and a flagrant foul is really if he did it intentionally or not, which I don't really think he did. And the referees appear to agree with me right now. It does, I do believe, as John Carroll just inbounded here, side out of bounds. But Stanislavski will return here for Mount Union after a quick break. Keller's going to take a seat. Yeah, and John Carroll's head coach, not very pleased with that call, as not only is he talking to the ref right next to him, but he's talking to the ref across the other side of the court on that call. As Eric Hanna now, guarded closely by Chris Painter. Around the perimeter they go now, down low inside to David Gentry. Gentry now with four on the shot clock. They need to get up a shot here. It's two seconds. Gentry fires up a shot, gets it to go. Nice bank shot there for David Gentry. Yeah, a little bit more difficult of a shot right there for Gentry. Actually was moving while he shot that. So Chris Painter Jr. is able to break the press, and he goes coast to coast right there for the layup. He gets fouled hard, and Painter's going to head to the line here for two. Yeah, and it looked like you could have fit at least 20 chairs underneath Chris Painter Jr. By the way, he was floating on that layup right there. Tremendous athlete Chris Painter Jr. is. And way to draw that foul against David Gentry. And I love how you mentioned that right there. Chris Painter Jr., he's definitely got some insane hops. He's only listed as six foot, but we've seen Chris Painter Jr., especially in those layup lines pregame. I mean, that man can get up and definitely dunk with the best of them. As David Gentry is going to get called for the foul. He takes a seat as that's actually going to be Gentry's fifth personal foul as well. So he's going to be taking a seat for the foreseeable future as Flannery re-enters the game. Chris Painter Jr.'s first free throw is up and in. 72-53 now, Mount Union. As Painter joins Ethan Stanislavski, Braden Poole, and Christian Parker as four Raiders in double figures here tonight. As it's now 73-53, Mount Union after those two Chris Painter Jr. free throws. William Wallace now will give it up to Eric Hanna. Hanna now over to Flannery. Flannery back over to Wallace as Wallace gives it up to Flannery once more. Flannery fires up a three. That's good. P.J. Flannery now makes it 73-56. Yeah, Flannery left uncontested at the top of the three-point line, kind of like how scary Otis was a little earlier in this game, and just rose up and hit that shot for the Blue Streaks. Chris Painter hands it off to Stanislavski as we approach the eight minute mark here in this one as Painter now fires up a three of his own. That's no good. Fight for the rebound. Painter came up with it. Dishes it down low inside to Parker. Great athletic play there by Painter to set Parker up for two. Yeah, it's almost as, as if Painter kind of just hit the ball towards Chris Painter, or sorry, towards Christian Parker for him to get that ball into the post. And at the other end, Sartain's floater is no good. JCU wanted a goaltending call right there, but they're unable to get it as Stanislavski now fires up a mid-range shot at the other end. That one's good. Stanislavski now at 13 points, 77-56. Pete Moran's going to call another timeout. He is furious right now with that referee. Yeah, and in, in all honesty, he probably should have gotten a call. Looked like Christian Parker did hit the backboard way before the ball even hit the rim or even touched uh, the backboard in general. So definitely Mount Union got away with a call right there, but nonetheless, beautiful pull-up jumper right there from Stanislavski as Pete Moran, like you said, Jacob, takes a timeout. Yeah, and I got to agree. It definitely looked like a goaltending call there from my point of view as well as technically Christian Parker didn't make contact with the ball, but he did hit the backboard. The backboard was shaking there, so that definitely would have altered the shot. Nonetheless, the Raiders don't get that call on them. And they still have a 21-point lead here as once more a score update 
from Heidelberg. Student Prince is on top, 57-52. With 7.50 left to go in that one. The winner of that game will play the winner of this one here tonight. As John Carroll, John Carroll's women's basketball team still taking care of Wilmington here on top, 71-54 in that one. And Baldwin Wallace in Otterbein for men's basketball action down in Otterbein. Just starting here as that game is tied up at four with 17.03 to go in the first half in that one. So Connor O'Toole, Omar Abumadam, PJ Flannery, Eric Hanna, and Jackson Sartain here for the John Carroll Blue Streaks. And for Mountain Union, it'll be Darrell Newsome, Christian Parker, Ethan Stanislavski, Chris Painter Jr., and Braden Poole. So two now will give it up to a nice backdoor cutting Eric Hanna who gets to the rim for two. Yeah, it looks like John Carroll did a great job of zoning everyone out to the wing and having just that nice dish into the post for Hanna and easy in, no contest for the Blue Streaks. As Chris Painter gives up to Parker who gives up to a cutting Braden Poole. Poole's going to draw the foul here. We're going to see if they call it a shooting foul or not. And they will call it a shooting foul, so Braden Poole heads back to the free throw line here. Foul called on Eric Hanna. Yeah, I don't know if I would agree on the shooting foul call right there. I mean, it looked, if anything, more of a reach in. Nonetheless, Braden Poole up at the line misses his first free throw for the Purple Raiders. So score remains 77-58, 7.06 left to go here in this one. Poole's second free throw is up. That one is good. It's 78-58, Mount Union. Abu Matum brings it up now for John Carroll. Gives up to Flannery. Flannery guarded closely here on the perimeter by Parker. Puts it on the floor. Dishes out to O'Toole. Extra pass over to Hannah for three. In and out, no good. Rebound Parker. Yeah, just unlucky right there for Eric Hanna. Had beautiful ball movement from John Carroll as Christian Parker gets a foul right there for setting a really hard screen on Eric Hanna. <laughs> and you see Terrell Newsome. Terrell Newsome kind of making fun right now and saying that that might have been a flop. And I got to admit, Chris Parker definitely hit him with a hard screen right there, but it just simply looked like Eric Hanna just wasn't looking. I don't know if that's necessarily a foul call. It looked like Parker was set to me, but it's going to be John Carroll basketball here. I mean, there have been a few screens set by John Carroll that have been just as hard as that one and no foul call. So kind of just questioning what the refs really saw right there. I mean, I did see, you know, some pretty heavy contact between Parker and and Hannah, but nonetheless, it is John Carroll basketball. And Hannah's gonna take a seat right here. The athletic trainer, I think, is gonna check him out to see if he had any head injury on that play, which Eric Hannah's insisting over there. He's very upset that he was taken out of this one, that he is fine. Hugh Brown re-enters the game here for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, in a situation like that, it just simply looked like to me, Hannah just wasn't really looking Christian Parker's way, and Parker just hit him with the regular screen that he would normally do, but since he's not paying any attention, he just goes down to the ground there. The referees signal, I believe, a sh shot clock change, and that is the case. There's now 20 seconds on the shot clock as the Blue Streaks inbound it here. Abu Matum hands it off to Brown. Brown now kicks it over to Flannery. Flannery now over to Sartain. Sartain now. Gives it up to Flannery here. Nine seconds on the shot clock as Abu Matum looks to go to work on Stanislavski. Gets right past him, but it's stripped away from behind. Parker now on the break. Goes up for the dunk. And a thunderous jam right there from the sophomore. Puts the exclamation point on the fast break. Yeah, Christian Parker does a great job of getting into the passing lane right there. Stealing the ball. Taking it uncontested and in for that beautiful slam dunk. 80 to 58 as O'Toole's pass is stolen away there by Poole. Stanislavski's gonna walk things up now for Mount Union. Yeah, O'Toole had the right idea right there. Tried the behind the back bounce pass to his teammate cutting to the rim. Just got interfered with Braden Poole. Poole with a nice Euro step, but his floater's no good. He's able to grab his own miss though, get the second chance points to go. Raiders with their largest lead of the night now. It's 82 58, 547 left to go here on 91.1 WRMU as O'Toole fires up a deep three. No good, but into the hands of Flannery, whose hook shot is good there for the Blue Streaks. Yeah, and just good awareness right there from Flannery. No one on him for that offensive rebound. As soon as he got the ball, just took it up himself and in with that floater. Stanislavski now brings things up for the Raiders. He dishes that off in the corner to Painter. Painter fires up a three that's short. Rebound out of Parker. Parker's putback's no good. Rebound Flannery. 
Hugh Brown now brings things up for JCU. And he's going to draw a foul before the shot right there. It's going to be a reach-in foul on Christian Parker. It's going to be Parker's third personal, 16 foul to half. So substitution here, Eric Hanna is going to return now for the Blue Streaks. For Mount Eden, Christian Parker is going to take a seat. He's got 21 points in this one. Scary Otis is going to re-enter the contest for the Raiders. So Hugh Brown's going to inbound it here from underneath the basket. He gives it up to Sartain. Sartain now over to Flannery. Flannery fires up a deep three. That's no good. Rebound to Chris Painter. Painter brings things up now for Mount Union. Cruising in this one as Stanislavski slows things down for the Raiders. He hands it off to Skariotis. Skariotis now jab steps, swings it cross court over to Darrell Newsom. Newsom goes up for the layup. It's good. And one opportunity coming for Darrell Newsom. Yeah, Newsom, you know, trying to find his shot all night. Finally just took it himself and said, hold my beer. Took it up strong and got the and one opportunity for the Purple Raiders. Good work. So it's now 84-60 Mountain Union here, 449 left to go. 91.1 WRMU as Newsom tries to finish off this and one opportunity. And he cannot do so. He's still got seven points here tonight. It is 84 to 60 in this one. As Hugh Brown now will dump that one off to Hannah. Hannah over to Flannery. Flannery back to Brown. As Brown now gives it up to Flannery, fires up a three. That's good. PJ Flannery having a nice game here off the bench. He's got 16 points. It's 84 63. Yeah, yet again, unattended. Flannery was at the top of the three point line. Just rose up, shot it, and sank it for the blue streaks. Stanislavski now brings it up for the Raiders. He will kick that over to Chris Painter Jr. Painter now hands it off to Scariotis. Scariotis over to Darrell Newsom. Newsom drives on O'Toole, goes up for the layup. That one's good. Nice take once again by Darrell Newsom. Yeah, another strong layup right there from Darrell Newsom. Just took it all, just took it himself all the way as he tried to get that rebound, but looked like he was out of bounds and made contact with the ball at the same time. So the ball will remain with John Carroll. It's going to be a timeout here for Pete Moran as there's 3.59 left to go in this one. Raiders cruising to an 86 to 63 lead here on 91.1 WRMU. It certainly looks like the Raiders will be able to hold on in this one barring any incredible miracle comeback here for the Blue Streak. So taking a look now at a potential opponent here for the Raiders if they are able to hold on in this one. Heidelberg starting to gain some separation on the Capitol Commons set on top. 68 to 58, 256 left to go in that one. So it looks like it could potentially be Heidelberg and Mountain Union in the OAC semifinal. That game will take place on Thursday here at the MAC at 7 p.m. Davis and I would be on the call for that one if the Raiders are able to hold on here. Some early score updates from top seed in Marietta taking on Ohio Northern. Pioneers on top right now, 10 to nine in that one, 15-58 left to go in the first half. And the other OAC men's basketball game going on here tonight, Otterbein with 13-03 left to go in the first half on top of Baldwin Wallace, eight to five. And so the winner of the Baldwin Wallace and Otterbein game will play the winner of the Marietta and Ohio Northern game in the other OAC semifinal. So Hugh Brown is going to inbound it here for John Carroll out of the timeout. And he will give that up to P.J. Flannery. Flannery now gives it up to O'Toole. O'Toole cross court over to Flannery once again. Flannery now thought about the three instead gives it to Brown. Nice give and go action back to Flannery as nice ball movement here back out to O'Toole. O'Toole picks up his dribble load, kicks it over to Sartain. Hugh Brown now has it with seven on the shot clock. He goes up for the layup. It's stripped away though by Painter. Stanislavski is going to bring it up now. Stanislavski on the break, dishes it out to Newsom, who fires up the open three. It's no good. Rebound to Brown. Brown now looking to push the pace. He swings it over to Hannah, who fires up a transition three. That's well short into the hands of Newsom. Newsom now. It was a three-on-one opportunity for the Raiders, and John Carroll wisely gets called for the reach-in foul. And so that will be the seventh foul of the half for the Blue Streaks. Darrell Newsom heads the line for a one and one The Raiders getting set to clear their bench here as Jonah McCartney re-enters the game, as does Andrew Keller. Alex Thielen will enter the game for the first time here tonight, and so will the senior from Gerard, Ohio, 
Julian Barry. So the Raiders faithful giving Braden Poole, Ethan Stanislavski, Mike Scariotis, and Christian Parker. Nice ovation here. And my apologies, Chris Painter Jr. actually, but Christian Parker too definitely should get that ovation as well. All the Raiders contributing in a big way here tonight. As the referees have a stoppage in play here just to clean up some sweat on the floor. As Newsom's going to get set for the front end of the one and one opportunity. So 3.23 left to go here in this one. Raiders on top, 86 to 63. As we'll see if they're ready now, and they are indeed for the one and one. So Newsom has a chance here to be yet another Raider in double figures here tonight. First free throws up, and that one's in and out, no good. Rebound to Connor O'Toole. Hugh Brown's going to bring it up now for John Carroll. He gives that one up to Eric Hanna. Hanna now over to Flannery. Flannery over to Brown. And Brown looking to go to work on Keller. Picks up his dribble and kicks it over to Sartain. Sartain now over to Flannery. Flannery, a deep three. That's no good. Rebound Thielen. Yeah, great contest right there from Julian Barry. Flannery had been sinking those threes all second half, and Barry just stepped up made a good play on the ball. Alex Thielen now gives it up to Julian Barry. Barry out to Jonah McCartney. McCartney now over to Darrell Newsom as Newsom looks to go to work here. Cross court over to Andrew Keller. Keller now down low inside to Barry. There's nine on the shot clock as Barry back out to Newsom. Fires up the three. That one's good. Darrell Newsom with 12 points. Mike Fuwan is going to call a quick substitution timeout here to get Isaiah Smith in the game as Newsom is going to take a seat here. And for John Carroll, number 12, Griffin Hanna is going to see his first action tonight. But Darrell Newsom takes a seat, so all of the starting five now for the Raiders will call it a night here. The Raiders on top here by 26, 89 to 63. Hugh Brown now goes up for the shot. He's going to get fouled here by Julian Barry. And it's going to send Hugh Brown here to the free throw line for two free throws. Mountain Union in this one, though, they've shot over 50% from the floor at 52% on the night. 37% from deep as well, hitting 10 three-pointers. Blue Streaks have only shot 35% from the floor, 23% from the three-point line. As Brown's first free throw is up and in, it's 89-64 Mountain Union. As a substitution here for John Carroll as well. Number 31, Michael Patterson, the freshman from Euclid, Ohio, is going to see his first action here tonight. As Hugh Brown's second free throws up, that one's good. So it's now 89-65. So Andrew Keller brings it up. He swings it over to Isaiah Smith. Smith now over to Andrew Keller. As Keller's going to slow things down now for Mountain Union. He takes the screen from McCartney. Hands it off to Alex Thielen. Thielen now out to Smith. Smith now looks to drive. Nice pass to Julian Berry. Great feed from Isaiah Smith. The freshman sets up Berry for the easy two. Yeah, great ball movement right there all around from the Raiders. Four out of the five players for the Raiders touch the ball on that possession. A nice feed to Julian Berry and in for that basket. Griffin Hannes three is off the rim, no good. And so the ball will go out of bounds back to Mountain Union as some more substitutions here. George Wilson will see his first action tonight, the freshman from Columbia Station, Ohio. And the other substitution here as well, it will be number 14, Blake Booker, the freshman from Putin Bay, Ohio, checking in for John Carroll. Isaiah Smith now at the other end, fires up a three. That's no good. Fight for the rebound, and it goes into the hands of John Carroll as Barry took a shot to the face right there. And Barry still back away from the play. Isaiah Smith now comes away with the steal. It's going to be a quick timeout here as Julian Barry is going to get off the court. And that's going to let Alec Broshad check in here for the Raiders. As Barry is getting looked at now by the trainer. Two Raiders now taking some hits to the face here tonight. Yeah, and it looks more like Julian Barry got poked in the eye on this play. Very right around the eye area, as we can see from where we are sitting up here in the bleachers. So hopefully he's okay 
it's always sucks to see someone go out like we saw Mason Trubisky and Brayton Poole go out in this game so far. Nonetheless, Mount Union basketball. So with Broshad checking in for Mount Union, it's going to be EJ Buckner Jr. checking in here for the Blue Streaks as McCartney now fires up a three at the other end for the Raiders. That's no good. Rebound into the hands of Broshad, though. Broshad goes up for the layup, and the putback's good. Alec Broshad gets it to go there for the Raiders. Yeah, Alec Broshad, the tallest man to appear in this game so far at 6'10", doing a great job of using his body and his strength to put that shot back up for the Purple Raiders. Andrew Keller now kicks it over to McCartney. McCartney fires up a three. That's no good. Broshad once again comes up with the rebound. His put back there is no good, though. And the rebound to Blake Booker. Booker brings it up for the Blue Streaks. The final 45 seconds in this one. As going up for the layup there is Griffin Hanna. That's no good. Rebound to Jonah McCartney. Yeah, even though he missed Griffin Hanna with a beautiful spin move right there off the backboard. Just couldn't get it in, unfortunately. About an eight-second difference here between shot clock and game clock as Keller dribbling things out here for the Raiders. Raiders are going to advance to the OAC semifinals here. Get one step closer to potentially getting that OAC tournament title as Isaiah Smith holds things here. There's four on the shot clock. Raiders are just going to let the clock run out. And it's a shot clock violation. It'll be nine seconds left for John Carroll just to dribble things out with the Raiders on top here, 93-65 on 91.1 WRMU. And Griffin Hanna is indeed just going to dribble things out. Crowd gives a nice ovation here for the Raiders. They come away with a big victory. They will play host to, let's take a look at that final score, the Heidelberg Student Princes. The Student Princes came away with a 77-65 victory over Capital. So the Raiders survive in advance to the semifinals of the OAC tournament, where they will take on Heidelberg. Following the Raiders' 93-65 victory here tonight, Davis, what are your final thoughts here on this one? It's always a good day when you end up getting five players on the same team in double-digit points as for the Purple Raiders. Darrell Newsom finishes the game with 12 points. Stanislavski with 13. Chris Painter Jr. with 11 points. Braden Poole 15. And Christian Parker topping it off with a team high and game high 21 points. So having that much scoring on your team all at one time is a winning recipe. And hopefully they can repeat that same success Thursday night against the Heidelberg Student Princes. And just keep up the defensive pressure that they did against John Carroll. And I think the Raiders will be okay. Yeah, that's for sure. If you can continue to play defense like how the Raiders did tonight, then they can definitely go far in this tournament. They held John Carroll to just 33% shooting overall from the floor. And as Davis mentioned, once again, the Raiders were led by Christian Parker. He finished with a game-high 21 points to lead the Raiders to victory. So that's going to be all here from the OAC quarterfinals. The Raiders advance to the semifinals. Congratulations to our men's basketball team. Also our women's basketball team as well. Coming away with the big victory down in Marietta. They will be taking on Baldwin Wallace and their matchup that will also be on Thursday. We unfortunately won't be on the call for that one, but we wish the Raiders women's basketball team the best of luck in their OAC semifinal matchup as well. And so it's been a pleasure here to be with you guys here on the men's basketball live stream and 91.1 WRMU. Special thanks to Brian Martell, our buddy, back in the studio for keeping us on the air all throughout the night here on the radio. We appreciate you, Brian. And so signing off now for the great Davis Roby, my name is Jacob Attar, and as always, it's a great day to be a Purple Raider.